The South China Sea, this magnificent sea area, is not only rich in natural resources, but also a key stage for international shipping and geopolitics. It is the main waterway connecting East Asia, the Middle East and Europe. Global trade of up to $5.3 trillion passes through it every year, including important oil and natural gas transportation routes. However, the strategic location of the South China Sea also brings complex international disputes. Since there are many countries surrounding the South China Sea, including China, the Philippines, Malaysia, Brunei, Indonesia, and Vietnam. These countries have had huge disputes over their territorial sovereignty and resources in the South China Sea, both in the past and now. In particular, the dispute between China and the Philippines has continued to heat up in recent years. In order to ensure territorial security, China has stepped up the construction of military facilities in the South China Sea in recent years. Since 11 years ago, China has begun building military bases on islands in the South China Sea and invested a huge amount of at least $38 billion. So far, China has fully controlled seven islands in the South China Sea and has established a series of military facilities on these islands. This shattered the plans of the United States and the Philippines. So, what is the strategic significance of these seven islands in China? How did it crush the plans of the United States and the Philippines? Welcome to Word Answer, where you will be able to learn about projects, cooperation around the world, and important information about China. Subscribe to us and discover more interesting events around the world. As the largest coastal country in the South China Sea, China has always firmly safeguarded its sovereignty over the Nansha Islands, Shisha Islands, Zhongsha Islands, and Dongsha Islands. However, due to the large number of countries surrounding the South China Sea, complex territorial disputes have always existed in this area, and some countries have even tried to expand their influence in the South China Sea by competing for islands and reefs. In order to defend its territorial sovereignty and national interests in the South China Sea, China has begun an island building plan to develop the South China Sea into China's largest maritime military strategic base. Since 2012, China has invested a lot of manpower and financial resources in reclamation of Fiery Cross Reef in the center of the Nansha Islands, and plans to build an artificial island covering an area of 2.8 square kilometers here. Until April 2015, China successfully completed the sand blowing and reclamation operation, turning Yongshu Island from sea to land. Now, this island is not only the largest artificial island built by China in the South China Sea, but also one of the important administrative centers in the South China Sea. Large airports, ports, hospitals, stadiums, libraries, and other facilities have been built here which can accommodate thousands of people permanently and provide logistical support and humanitarian relief. However, the disputes in the South China Sea have not abated. There are still differences in the positions and claims of neighboring countries, making the South China Sea issue the focus of international attention. Therefore, China once again started its crazy island building plan. As early as 2013, China first carried out reclamation and expansion of Chigua Island. After more than a year of construction, China completed the reclamation project of Chigua Reef in June 2014. The entire reclamation project covers an area of more than 0.1 square kilometers. In addition, while constructing Chigua Island, China completed the artificial reclamation project of Huayang Reef from July 2013 to 2014. The total area of the island reached 0.28 square kilometers. In the past, the strategic location of Huayang Reef was very important, and its construction was of great significance for protecting Fiery Cross Island. Therefore, even though the areas of Huayang Reef and Chigua Reef were small, China did not hesitate to spend a lot of manpower and material resources to expand them at that time. 
In fact, the sand blowing reclamation process is quite expensive, with construction costs of approximately $1 billion per square kilometer of land. Therefore, the cost of building Chigua Island reaches about $100 million, while the cost of Huiyang Island reaches about $280 million. Taking into account the future construction of ground facilities on the islands, the investment in related supporting facilities on the two islands will exceed $900 million. While Chigua Island was not yet completed, China also started construction on Dongmen Island on April 5, 2014. Subsequently, on June 6, 2014, Gavin Reef was also included in the reclamation project by China. After a year of reclamation and land reclamation projects, Dongmen Reef developed into Dongmen Island with an area of 0.08 square kilometers. However, this is equivalent to 200 times the original area of Dongmen Reef. At the same time, the reclamation area of Nanchuan Island has also reached 0.18 square kilometers, forming an artificial island about 300 meters long and 250 meters wide. As time came to 2015, China continued to construct Mischief Island and Subi Reef. At first, Mischief Island was only a small reef with an area of only a few hundred square meters, which was difficult to meet China's construction plans in the South China Sea. However, since China has increased its construction efforts on Mischief Island, the area of Mischief Reef has expanded to 5.66 square kilometers. This area exceeds Midway Island and becomes the largest island in the Nanshaw Islands. At the same time, China began a sand blowing and reclamation project on the Subi Reef in January 2015, forming Subi Island. Subi Island has an area of 4.3 square kilometers, exceeding Fiery Cross Island's 2.8 square kilometers and second only to Mischief Island's 5.6 square kilometers making it the second largest island in the Nanshaw Islands. Up to now, China has successfully built and controlled the seven most important islands in the South China Sea, with a cumulative investment of more than 18 billion US dollars. If China's continued investment in the South China Sea is taken into account in the future, the investment in the entire reclamation and related supporting facilities will exceed 20 billion US dollars. Among the countries surrounding the South China Sea, only China has sufficient financial and material resources to implement such a large-scale and planned reclamation project. But what many people don't know is that in addition to expanding China's power territory, by strengthening its control of the seven South China Sea islands, how will it crush the sanctions plans of the United States and the Philippines against China? In fact, before China built islands, Warships and aircraft from the United States or Southeast Asia had frequently appeared in the South China Sea many times. In this context, China has repeatedly warned other countries and declared to the world that China has sovereignty over the South China Sea. However, in order to suppress China, the United States even cooperated with the Philippines to jointly open military bases in the waters surrounding the South China Sea trying to use the Philippines to contain China on the South China Sea issue. Even this year, there is a dispute between the two sides over the Second Thomas Shoal in the South China Sea. However, as China's military strength rises and its control over the South China Sea region strengthens. In the future, it is difficult for the United States maritime hegemony to pose a threat to China. The islands built by China not only consolidate China's military presence and control in the South China Sea, but also enhance China's military early warning capabilities. Even if a US warship only approaches the South China Sea, the radar system deployed by China on the islands in the South China Sea can detect and mark the position of the US fleet in time. This makes it difficult for the United States to try to suppress China through military provocation. More importantly, the South China Sea is one of the most important strategic locations in the world. The United States has been trying to curb China's expansion of sea power through its so-called return to the Asia-Pacific and Indo-Pacific strategy, and the South China Sea has become a key strategic focus. 
On the one hand, because the South China Sea has a unique water depth advantage, the average water depth exceeds 1,200 meters. This makes the South China Sea one of the important waterways connecting the Pacific and Indian Oceans. According to statistics, nearly 41,000 trading ships travel here every year. The region's shipping volume accounts for 30% of global shipping volume. For China, about 90% of China's imported energy needs to be transported through the South China Sea. At the same time, 60% of China's annual import and export goods also pass through the South China Sea. This means that the South China Sea is basically an economic and energy lifeline for China. Therefore, controlling the South China Sea is of extremely important strategic significance for China. It is worth mentioning that the South China Sea is China's largest oil and gas storage area, with reserves reaching tens of billions of tons. It is no exaggeration to call it a treasure house of resources. According to conservative estimates, the South China Sea may have about 30 billion tons of oil reserves and about 20 trillion cubic meters of natural gas reserves. If these oil and gas resources can be successfully developed, it will bring economic value of tens of trillions of RMB. In addition, the South China Sea is also believed to have huge reserves of flammable ice, estimated to reach 19.4 billion cubic meters. In addition, the South China Sea is also rich in mineral deposits of 35 kinds of metals and rare metals including manganese, iron, copper, and cobalt, among which manganese nodules are particularly important. These rich energy and mineral resources have led to the South China Sea being described as the second Middle East. For China, in order to meet the energy needs of its domestic population of more than 1.4 billion, China has needed to import at least more than 500 million tons of oil from other countries every year in recent years. But in the future, if it successfully develops oil and gas resources in the South China Sea, China can reduce its dependence on external energy supply to a large extent and ensure China's energy security. At the same time, this will also bring many benefits to China's development. For example, reducing energy import costs, improving the stability of energy supply, and reducing sensitivity to volatility in international energy markets. Therefore, the oil and gas resources in the South China Sea will ensure that China will not be troubled by energy problems for at least 30 years. It can also provide China with more energy options, and promote the diversification and sustainable development of China's energy source structure. This is also of positive significance for promoting China's energy transformation and environmental protection. Although resource development in the South China Sea involves the sovereignty and territorial disputes of multiple countries, China advocates resolving disputes in the South China Sea through peaceful and stable means and emphasizes its territorial sovereignty. The international community also calls on all parties to resolve disputes through dialogue and cooperation to ensure peace and stability in the South China Sea. In 2019, the Philippines and China established a joint committee aimed at jointly developing offshore oil resources in the South China Sea. This cooperation is seen as an effort by the two countries to find solutions to the South China Sea disputes through dialogue and cooperation. Therefore, it is not difficult to see that China's purpose in building these seven islands is not only to take the South China Sea as its own, but also to create a peaceful environment for cooperation with neighboring countries. But unfortunately, with the resignation of Philippine President Duterte, the contradiction between the Philippines and China on the South China Sea issue has resurfaced. 